It's uh, Tuesday the 8th of May, I think. Um, I'm just working myself up to gluing some fuselage together this evening. So here we go. Uh, I've got my bits all um, secured uh, and um, pinned into the correct positions. So I'm just going through. I'm going to move this top long run um, back um, or am I yeah I'm gonna move this back a bit further I was worried about this member here meeting that but um, I, I'm, I'm less worried about that now I just want to make sure I leave myself a decent amount of spare at the end uh, back here um, similarly, this lower part here, uh, we've got about a couple of, well, an inch and a half um, excess at the ends. I'd like more, really, just to account for cock-ups, but um, well, we, we, it is what it is. I think I think we're okay. I've sort of triple-checked the plans, so I should be able to. Uh, I, th I believe I've got enough excess there to do what I need to do. Um, order of thought is i'm going to put uh got some double-sided uh, single-sided sticky plastic to go underneath where my joints are going to happen um and then mix up uh the epoxy for the wetting uh coat which doesn't have filler in it i'm going to wet the um ends of this um, and the surfaces that need to be glued. Um, I was in a bit of a quandary about these, about the glue, uh, how the glue is going to work here, because this is under a little bit of pressure because it's kind of holding the whole structure. I think, to my mind, um, almost all of the strength is going comes from uh, this gusset on this side, and then the whole of the other side is going to be sheeted in ply. So I'm not kind of too worried about it and that's the same reason why I wasn't really a tremendously worried about this scarf joint here I know that they should be as strong as anything and I think they are but also there's going to be ply sheeting behind it all so um, and I think that's where a lot of the strength is going to come from um, so yeah so uh, wetting uh, layer then um, mix in the filler drop these on in the right places all of these along here wherever they're required and then um, I'm going to use some weight so the epoxy doesn't really like to be squished too hard they, 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 they I've seen in the literature that comes with the stuff they say try and you know the idea isn't to clamp it as hard as you can because you'll kind of squeeze all the uh, all the glue out of the joint so I'm going to use um, I'm actually going to use uh, some um like two by four material and then i'm thinking i'm going to put some some weight on top of that if i need to just to put some even pressure on the on all of these um probably the, another one here just to put some even but not too too extreme pressure on all of these joints that's the that's the goal for this evening and then i'm gonna have to steal myself eventually and cut this off at the correct position but i think that's probably a i'll get i'll get my inspe inspector involved in that he can help me to make that mistake um i'm a bit nervous about this bit this end part here this is a slightly peculiar area where the, this is where the wing the wing meets the uh the fuselage so there's kind of bending that needs to be done and it's all it's not it's not unclear but it's not hugely clear what actually happens here um, that's why I want to leave some excess and that's in a sense why I wanted to have a bit more excess than I've got but there we go so uh, first things first I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea okay so plan of attack is uh, I've got I've got these sanded on the back where I'm gonna bond them all of those bits uh, I've sanded all the parts I'm gonna use uh, so first thing mix up mix up my glue um, and the the wetting uh, stage which is the first stage of the um, according to my little 
uh, ear wet joint uh, add filler to mayonnaise consistency apply filled epoxy to one side only so I'm gonna wet my uh, wet my uh, uh, parts um, wet this on the end uh, wet the area on the top wet the glued surface of this um, get everything into position apply them then then uh, thicken up the epoxy with some filler apply it just to this part pop it on that's the plan so I was I couldn't really work out what to do with the this this interface here where the the one piece of wood meets the other one in a butt joint like that I think if 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 there's if there's wet epoxy in there wetted epoxy without filler that will migrate across and uh, and do its thing there but as I as I said I think um, I think almost all of the strength around these joints is in principle going to come from the uh, well it's going to be come from the skin that's going to be on that side of this whole assembly if you can imagine this whole thing is going to be skinned with plywood on on the on the, the ta where the table is uh, and and on the other side it's going to be this that gives it its strength so butt joints don't really carry a huge amount of strength in my in my estimation so in my understanding anyway so um, yeah so that's my plan of attack uh, I'm going to mix up plenty of glue it doesn't matter if I waste some I don't know why I get so uptight about the glue I think it's just because I think of it as special glue for aeroplanes um, whereas in fact it is just glue uh, and uh, I'll mix up plenty, doesn't matter if I waste some. I'll make sure I remember, to, I'll try to remember to do a test piece. And, uh, well, I will do a test piece. And um, we'll take it from there. So, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get a time lapse going when I've got my glue initially mixed up. And, uh, uh, well, here goes nothing. Oh, the last thing is I'm going to lay out um, these pieces of two by one along on the tops of all of the parts that I've glued. Just to apply some gentle pressure to all of the um, to all of the places where I've got glued, bits glued. Right, running out of excuses now. Better get get on it. Um, okay, I'll time lapse this maybe, and uh, you'll be able to see me um, uh, rushing around trying to get everything done. Okay, so that that all got a little bit exciting, and I completely forgot to record any of it. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so what you can see there is my uh, is is me applying gentle gentle pressure to the uh, to the gussets on top of the um, bits of fuselage that I've just glued together. This is the first thing I've really glued together that is more complicated than just a piece of material. So this is quite exciting. Um, it went okay. Uh, I, on a couple of the joints I forgot to wet them before I put the filler in with the uh, glue so I had to make up some more, well I, I thought well maybe I can get away with it and then I thought that's not a very good idea so I mixed up some more mure, uh, more uh, neat glue uh, to wet them out and then use the um, the other batch which had the filler in to finish it off um, <clears throat> I'll probably live to regret saying this um, uh, but um, this West Epoxy seems pretty user-friendly, frankly. I, it makes me feel quite confident, so, um, so that's pretty good. I think I might also have worked out how I can avoid setting up a whole jig for the other side of the airframe. Um, but, but I'll have to see. I mean, uh, the, the issue is that um, in, in this setup, the, the gusset plates sit on top which is fine um, this is the starboard side if you can imagine the front of the aircraft um, where you are sitting um, now so for the other half of the fuselage the plates need to be on that side which is a problem because they're essentially underneath the um, the, the pieces I'm trying to stick together but I have decided what I will do um, I can I can basically, I think I can basically epoxy together this structure just relying on the butt joints, okay? I think that almost like a tack weld, 
then I can flip the whole thing over and uh, fit the gusset plates on once it's been turned over. So it's, it's kind of like tack welding it together to start with, take it out of all these blocks, flip it over and put the gusset plates on the other side. That gets me the other half of the fuselage uh, without having to, to loft out all these um, all these blocks again and um, and so on. Once I've done that, even though it will have its gusset plates on the bottom, the port side will sit back down into these blocks again for the purposes of locating stuff. So I think I'm still in, in a good place. Um, I think I'm still in a good place with that. So uh, yeah, I was quite, uh, quite pleased to figure that one out because I didn't really want the, it is quite a lot of effort to draw all this out. And I didn't want to have to draw it all out, kind of mirror image on the other side of the table and blah, blah, blah. So. Um, unless I'm making some fundamental uh, aviation uh, error, uh, I think that might help me. So yeah, so okay, that's all good. That's probably about enough, as much as my nerves can handle for this evening. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether I'll get this one out tonight or uh, maybe wait for the next instalment. But um, anyway, if you have been, thanks for watching. I'm loving the fact that I've seen one or two comments uh, between people uh, who are out there who have this aeroplane that's really cool i really enjoy it it's really nice to watch that happen um if this can this project can act as a little bit of focus for people to have conversations around what's going on um then that just uh fills me with joy and also um if you see me doing something stupid as ever shout okay thanks very much and uh, see you in the next one